Hello guys, welcome to all, I hope you are well. Today I will try to show you a strategy, a trading tactic about the super trend indicator. It's actually a tactic. Because we will try to enter the trade before the super trend indicator. So how can we enter the trade earlier than the super trend indicator's signal? How can we exit the trade earlier from the super trend indicator's signal? Of course, it is not a 100% working strategy. I'm sharing this with you so that you get an idea. Because I get a lot of questions about super trend. How can we use it? Questions such as how the period settings should be and what we should do. First of all, let me say that if you are using super trend, the input settings on that graph should be different depending on the period you use. Because Supertrend is based on an ATR, it works according to the ATR indicator. If you adjust the ATR indicator according to the chart you are trading, you can get healthier results. First of all, as I always say, nothing I tell in this training video is in the nature of investment advice. Do not open trades by looking at these, you can get big losses. Friends, thank you in advance for listening to me. If you have permission, I would like to move on to our training video. As you can see, a 15-minute chart is open and the candles are normal candles. First, let's bring up our super trend indicator. When we write super trend here, the indicator we will use will be the indicator of our teacher Kavanshas Biljik. Because as far as I can see right now, the best working super trend indicator on TradingView is Kavanshas indicator. It is optional and we can change input settings of it very easily. Once we click on it, it is automatically added to our indicator graph. What is this super trend guys? As you can understand from its name, a trend indicator, that is, when it predicts the start of a trend, it creates a buy and sell signal for us and works based on ATR. In other words, ATR uses a stop, ATR stops when it falls below a certain setting. It also gives us a buy signal when it receives a certain ATR setting. Now there is no need to explain the super trend indicator. As you can see, it is a really good indicator, but our main goal here is not to make the indicator work well, but to enter the trade before the buy signals of the indicator. In other words, we want to enter the trade before the buy signal here and exit the trade before the sell signal there. Because why? Since this is a trend indicator, it waits until the end of the trend. Sometimes the positions we take can be harmful because it waits until the end of the trend. In other words, the profit we receive at that time may be in loss later on, friends. So we need to pay attention to them and how do we minimize them? Of course, we do not need to use another indicator to minimize them. We can see them with a very simple support resistance and trend lines. How do we do these? I will try to explain these. Now, as you can see, the super trend indicator is open in front of me. And we are on a 15 minute chart, and when I pull the chart back a little bit, let's shrink it a little bit, we need to draw a Fibonacci, guys. If we draw Fibonacci we can find support and resistances. Let's know this first. So where should we shoot? Let me give you some information on this subject, the longer you draw the Fibonacci, the more likely you are to approach the correct results, but we cannot say that this support is correct, this resistance is correct. After drawing the Fibonacci, we can find a certain accuracy by looking at how much it has touched the lines, how much reaction has been received from there, how the turns have been provided. But we cannot say that this support is 100% true. We cannot say that this resistance is 100% correct. We can never say, friends, because there is no such thing. Support and resistance points are a purely relative concept. So it depends on where you pull the support resistance point from. Now I'm going backwards on my chart, and as I take it backwards, let's even turn off the super trend indicator. Let's try to get it as wide as possible so that there is no visual pollution. What I mean by taking it wide is this, let's take a longer time frame according to the chart we are using. So I'm currently using a 15-minute chart and I'll take a wide angle accordingly. 
I'm looking at where is the most ideal place for me. I'm going back to the 17th, now I can get it from here. This is an ideal hill for me. Is there another hill behind it? There is a hill here, when I look behind it, we can take it from here again, we can take this hill from here, but the important thing here is this, friends. Always be careful that the current momentary price is not a bottom. So look, this is the bottom here, the price should not be the bottom. So I'm giving an example, if the bottom is here, don't draw it from here. If you go accordingly, you can reach more accurate results. What are we doing now? What have we said? The hill here is ideal for us. Now I'm going to draw a Fibonacci from the hill here. That hill over there is perfect for me. From here I touch the very top of that hill, friends, and pull it down. I'll zoom in on the graph now. Let's make it a little smaller so that we can see it more clearly. It was here now. Okay, this is the area. When I draw it a little down like this, let's put it right and make no mistake and I took the bottom. As you can see, I set the price at the bottom point here, now I can enlarge it on the screen. Because I did what was necessary. Now what I have to do here is, first, draw a horizontal line on the trend lines you drew. So I do it like this. I draw the horizontal line. I started from zone 23. Because we have no business in the bottom zone. Friends, we never have anything to do with bottoms and peaks. Never forget this. We can take the rest of the middle part. Now I draw a support zone here. In this way, if we throw it into all regions, we can see our way more easily and we can predict where the next buy signal of the price may come from. As I always say, this is a financial market. There are never 100% results here, folks. Let's never forget this and act accordingly. I'm deleting the Fibonacci now. As you can see now I have drawn the support resistance points and I can see the prices more clearly and more comfortably. We didn't draw a horizontal line in the zero region, we just drew it in the 23 region. I turn on the super trend indicator. Now I fix the input settings for this, it comes to us by default. So it comes with the default setting. In the ATR period, I usually set it to 10 in 15 minute chart, but you can change this. For this video, I'll set it to 40. I'll show it as 40. And I'll tell you why I set it to 40. When I hit 40, the indicator tosses it one candle forward or one candle back. And here, a candle forward and a candle back means a candle to us, sometimes preventing huge losses. That's why I'm setting my ATR period to 40. And as you can see, our indicator started to give a smoother signal. Now let's start from here. Friends, as you can see, when we look at it, the last candle has received support from our 23 region. We see you working here, but our business is not with them. As I just said, we will go into the process before that. We will enter the trade earlier and exit the trade earlier. Now we make a backward assumption with the lines we have drawn. And I will come to this area last. Now, when we look at it, it gave us a sell signal here. Right after that, it gave a buy signal here. Maybe support and resistance as I have told you many times. I will tell you again without getting bored because it is the backbone of this place. Just as the foundation of the human body is the skeleton, the most important foundation here is support, resistance, and trends. Let's never forget this. You cannot walk in this market without knowing these. Now it has given the sell candle here, it gives the sell signal here and takes you out of the trade here. Why did we draw support and resistance? Look here it is touching the support, and here it is breaking the support to the downside. You can exit the trade here as the support zone is broken. So on average you exit the trade two candles in advance. It's getting you out of the way over there. In other words, wherever you look, friends, there is a loss of 1.5%, close to 2%.
When we look at the buy signal, for example, the price closed above the support here. This is normal, no problem here. Because it closed on the resistance. The buy signal has come again, this is normal, but the important thing for us is that it seems clearer here. I mean, there was a buy signal here, but the price went above the support here. How was it before? This is where the resistance is. Here is a candle closing above its resistance. The buy signal is coming, this buy signal should be here in our opinion. But because these conditions do not fit in the super trend, it gives you the signal here. It says, let these conditions be met for me, then I will give you a signal. It signals around the fifth candle. Your profit is already in loss over there. So let's look at the part over there because we have to look at the profit here. Let's take the closing of this, let's assume it closes here. So far, there is a profit of 0.65 in the period of about 15 minutes. How do we rate it there? We take risks. Because we need to do risk management very well here. As soon as the candle closes above the support, we can take a risk and open a trade on the resistance or support. We also take support or resistance as a stop order. So when the support is broken again, we can stop ourselves, friends. For example, it has made a closing on it here, too, and has risen quite a bit. It has fallen again, it has risen again, it is going as you can see. So the place you need to pay attention to here is the support resistance points. Here, the price has risen and closed above it. After you close above this, the yellow line here is where you will stop, that is, your support, if the price goes down, you need to stop at the yellow line. Because don't give them the profit here, let's go a little further back now. Going back a little further, as you can see the price is touching here in this region. Again, we see that the signal is buy. Look, it closes above and the price moves forward and we see that it is a buy signal again. Remember, candle closings are very important. Let's wait for the candle close now. If you don't wait for the candle close here, it may have stopped you here. Because it fell down to the support zone and went up again, the price increased. Wait for the candle to close. Surely, waiting for the candle close is sometimes beneficial, sometimes harmful, but be sure that it allows you to make the most of the opportunities available. When we look now, our support and resistance zones are also the same, this is already below the 0.23 zone, so I did not draw a horizontal trend line here. There's no point in looking here anyway. There are beneath again. I wish we had taken it there, but anyway, friends, let's not shoot there, I hope I was able to explain what I wanted to tell you. So now I'm coming to the beginning, where I just said. What I meant was that the price is already taking a reaction in the 0.23 region. If I had a trade here, I would be automatically profitable right now. So my current profit would be about 1.68%. I mean that's it, you can apply this in every period, but you have to adjust the input settings for it every time you apply it. So, whatever you do, guys, change their input settings and adjust their input settings. Let's go back a little further. The 0.23 region is already there, it's not visible either. Let's look over there. Now the price is getting reaction from here. Here we enter the trade, the price does not touch here again, a buy signal comes here, it goes up to the resistance. Look at the reaction from the resistance. The resistance has been broken, the downside has been broken, there has already been a sell signal, that is, since the resistance breakdown here has not occurred we can foresee that a sell signal will come when we think about it. So when you think a little logically, we can foresee that this can go there. When we look at it the same way. Here, for example, the market was flat, we could have made losses one after another here, friends. I won't lie now. Here we could have lost one after the other because no indicator works properly in the horizontal market. What would it be? What would we do? Here, we would apply a strategy of closing below support or closing above resistance. 
we would have stopped in a very minimal way. In the next transaction, we would try to remove those losses. This should be our logic. Also, this alone sometimes may not be enough for you. As you can see here, for example, it gave a buy signal from here. Here, the price has turned, a buy signal has come, it has been given here, it may not be enough on its own. In addition, you can also bring up pivot points as an extra. There are pivot point standards, friends, you can also bring P pivot points here. You can also make use of pivot points. We say it again, you know, look, the price has returned from here. Where was the previous place? Look, we say that the price has returned from here. After the price went down to the pivot point support, that is, the price support, it rose. This can create a buy condition for us. Friends, let's never forget them. Sometimes the Fibonacci we draw alone is not enough. We need to use them with different supports and resistances, which you can use as well. We have already opened two indicators here, one is the super trend indicator and the other is the pivot points. Fibonacci is not an indicator anyway, you can already use them in the free version. You can get support from pivots, you can also get support from Fibonacci. As I said, the wider the time interval, the more likely you are to see ahead. Friends, I hope the training video I explained was useful. Hopefully it benefits your business. As I said friends, nothing I explained in the training video is in the nature of investment advice. I wish you all good luck. See you in the next tutorial video, bye.